All right, so I have well over five references together here. I have this additional one of these crazy vines. And before I even work with that too much, I'm going to, like I have over and over again, use a 100% opaque brush, uh, soft edged, pretty big, really take out the, the hard edges because it's covering up a lot of the stuff I like. And that's not what I'm after. It's not about doing work and then just covering it up. But there's certain aspects that it's going to help with. Got to find where that red thing is. Good. And there's a few ways I can approach this. I want that red oil can. But I also want, let's see, um, a lot of this texture to be useful. So what I can do is actually make a new selection of this debris. Right there. Duplicate it and move that up above the roots, right? And then as I delete around it, it's going to make a lot of sense. So if I need a clean delete, I might take my opacity down and then trace right inside this root structure. like so, and then delete it away. So that root just really cleanly overlaps it. And then there's a lot more I can do, but I wanted to show you clone stamping. So before we get to the roots, <laughs> I want to play with getting more of this kind of water texture into the water here. So I'm on the layer with the texture I like. I use the clone stamp tool, which is underneath the brush. I see the options. I want it to sample from, in this instance, the current layer. And I want it to be 100% opacity, but soft edged, fairly large. And then I'm going to hold down option and target the texture I want to copy. And then I'm going to paint it over here. So basically, this is copying and pasting using my tool. But what's great is I get to decide where it kind of fills in. So it's a great way for me to work with these rippled reflections. Right. And then how much of that is going to get you know, covered up by these roots anyway? A fair amount, but maybe not as much as I need anymore, or as I thought, because maybe I don't want such a crazy um, image. Let's see. Yeah. Kind of works. Okay, so now with the roots, I want to play with levels and make it fit a little bit. That helps. Let's limit the shadows a little bit. You don't want solid black in your composition generally, but let's definitely limit the highlights. Okay, that helps. Now we want a little bit more yellow. A little bit more red in the highlights. Let's see. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of cyan. The shadows, more blue, more cyan really than blue. Good. OK, 
Okay, now this is a little problematic to me. That's bizarre. So I'm going to try transforming and getting those. I'm going to kind of blend these features together. And this is where we're doing kind of some spot tools. So I'm going to use my eraser smaller, just like I did with the trees up in the middle ground. Kind of blend some of these aspects in. But they work a little bit together. Trying to decide how much of that debris I want to keep. I think a fair amount. But I'm going to cut this off. Kind of nest that debris in behind this. It's got a fern. Okay, I also want to play, I think, with dodging and burning this copy of the debris, taking out some of these highlights. Remember, this is just a copy of this oil can part. Make these shadows a little bit stronger underneath it. It seem like it's resting on this kind of swampy land with these roots. And then I can do the same thing with the roots themselves, kind of change the lighting a little bit. be on the right layer. So there we go. Deepen their core shadows a bit. And then also I can burn down some of these shadows here. Remember always working on midtones, especially in the water. Maybe even erase a little bit the low opacity from some of these shadows. Mm, lower opacity. Softer. This is tricky. This actually might be a good place for clone stamping. So on this layer, I'm going to use clone stamp. I'm going to use it at a lower opacity now. Same layer, smaller size, kind of targeted for this shadow. I'm going to make this shadow a little bit more complex. Stealing it from another shadow on the same structure. Remember, you can always use Command Z if you think it's going too far. There we go. Water texture is very, very different. <laughs> it helps. Okay. All right. So far, so good. I think this could use some burning.
Now, if you burn too much and the colors get weird, you can also use what's called the sponge tool, which will either saturate or desaturate. Often you want to desaturate, kind of take some of the color out of something you're, you're working on. And it's a spot treatment again, if something's just too colorful. Okay, now I'm kind of going over it and I'm seeing some of these areas. I'm just gonna hit some of them to blend them in, but all the puzzle pieces are kind of working the way I thought. They should. The debris is there in the field in a way I like. And take a little bit of the edge off of it. I'm not going to gouge and blur it. Instead, I'm just going to use the soft eraser at the edges because this is more foreground and I don't want it all to be out of focus. But the further back it is, the more I can kind of low opacity erase it. Help the background come forward. And help the foreground elements really stand out. Okay, do I have foreground, middle ground, background? Absolutely. So the finishing touch, texture fill. All right. So this can come in multiple ways. My favorite way of using it is, let me get another one to show you, just so you can see the, the variety you can have. Because it's not like compositing, you're just using a texture. Later on we'll be using our compositing skills to, um, to make a cloud, kind of digitally paint a cloud from existing pixels. This is your introduction to kind of textures that way. Okay, this is wispier. I can take that, move it on top. I also like it has a little bit of pink in it. Move it over the top of everything. And I'm just going to use this on the bottom. So I'm going to stretch it across the bottom of my composition. I can warp it. Because horizontals are kind of boring visually. Make it a little bit of an S-curve. Okay, now I can take out all of the black. Right? And then... Just like compositing, use a, a big 100% eraser, really soft, and hit the edge. Get rid of that hard edge. Okay, but the morning mist has come in. So the easiest way is to just do it with opacity. Right? But you'll get better effects if you use something like pin light or soft light because it will help affect the color. And then you can duplicate it and make it normal and then really erase away from it. So like the foreground pyres here are kind of sticking up above the, the fog. You see that starts to make quite a difference. And now with this background overlay, I'm going to turn that to soft light. And it helps glaze all the colors and then erase it at the very top at 100%, but then to get rid of the hard edge. Now take it down. And just slowly hit it other places where I think it needs a little more shadow, a little bit more individuality. Okay? So those are texture overlays, all on top of the kind of transparent layers that we are compositing together. I think I overdid in this corner a little bit. Let me erase some of that out under that oil can, or whatever that is. Okay, good. Final step. We save and we crop. We save it as a PSD for ourselves and as a JPEG to put up to Photobug.